Okay, so this is part two of the lesson where I teach you how, where I walk through how to analyze our results for our SDS page gels. So we already evaluated the migration distances of the protein bands on our gel using ImageJ. Now we've imported those results into Excel and I've actually already gone in and I have edited the um, added details on the specific measurements that we took. So um, I've given them sample names and identified them. And so the dye front was always first per lane. And then we had six protein standards. And then we had a native uh, protein sample, hopefully our green fluorescent protein and a denatured sample of our green fluorescent protein. And then I added in a lane just so that we can keep track of which lane on the gel these are actually associated with. We don't need the angle, so you can actually delete that. That's not important. The next thing that we're going to do for this is evaluate our RF, which is a normalized migration length based on the die front. So this is just going to be um, our standards divided by the die front. I kind of like to have the die fronts out of here on their own, so I'm going to pull them down and then we're going to merge everybody up here closer together. And maybe we'll keep the standards by themselves. But we'll pull everybody up. All right, so we've got our standards. We're gonna measure the normalized migration length, which is the RF. And so this is just gonna be our standard length or the protein migration length divided by the die front for that lane. And we're gonna wanna use the absolute referencing. So um, on a Mac, this is you can use Control Command, Command T and that will add in the dollar signs in front of the letters and numbers, which will lock it to that cell. Okay, we don't want to lock our uh, length cell for the protein sample. So once we've got that, now we can fill down and all the references will still be linked to our die front in that lane. Um, we don't actually want to do that, but I'm lazy and don't like retyping everything. So instead I like cl clicking and dragging. So I filled down, but then I'm going to click and drag down our native lane to lane two. And then our denatured is lane three. And so those are now all written properly. I'm going to reduce the sig figs on these because that many sig figs is a little ridiculous. That's too many. <clears throat> all right. So now we have our normalized length. Next thing we need to do is write in our molecular weights. So we know the molecular weights for our standards. They're going to be in reverse order with the lowest one going the farthest. So we have 14, 20, 30, 38, 67, and 94. And when we plot this, we when we do the calibration curve, this is going to be log transformed. So we want to get the log of the molecular weight. And so this is just using the log function in Excel, which is equals log of our referenced cell. And then we can fill that down as well. And again, reducing the sig Okay, so now that we have this information, we can actually plot a chart. And so if we highlight both columns there, we can insert scatter plot. We don't actually want to line through it um, because we're going to add in a trend line. So if you click on the data, don't click it twice because that'll highlight just a single data point. Um, we want the whole data set that we're going to add trend line. We want a linear trend line, display equation on chart, display the R squared value. Okay. So R squared as close to one, one is a perfect fit. 0.98 is really good. So you're almost never going to see an R squared of one in real life. It's pretty rare. And so having something this high is actually pretty good. But then again, you want to look at your data and say, are you satisfied with this fit? I'm pretty satisfied with it. So we're going to go with it. All right. So you might be tempted at this point to cop to write down the slope off this chart. So we're going to, we need that slope and intercept. This is our standard curve. We're going to use that to find the molecular weight of our native and denatured proteins. And you might be tempted to just write it in, 
right? Please don't do this. This is a really bad habit to get into. Here it's okay, but if you get to the point where you're working with really large or really small numbers, Excel will plot this in scientific notation. If you try to write it down in scientific, not scientific notation, you lose a lot of data. You lose all those sig figs, and so you end up introducing massive errors. So what I recommend instead is to use the slope and intercept functions that are built into Excel. So this is just equal slope. You highlight the y values, which in this case is y is our molecular weight, sorry, the log of our molecular weight. X's are the migration, normalized migration distance. And we do the same thing for the intercept, which is just intercept. It's so nice and convenient to remember. Um, so we, again, do the same thing, log of molecular weight and our normalized migration distance. And so if we go in and we look at this, it should be the same as what we have in our chart. And it is brilliant. So that's a handy skill. You might think it's faster to just write it off the chart, but trust me, this is much better. You have far more sig figs embodied inside of these values and you want to retain as much as many sig figs as possible through your calculations and only remove your sig figs at the end because that keeps you from introducing error into your data okay so we've got that now we have to get our molecular weight for our samples so remember this is log transformed so we need to reverse log transform so this is going to be equal to 10 to our regression equation which is the slope so we're going to click that and we're going to absolute reference it times our X value, which in this case is our normalized migration distance plus our intercept again, absolute reference and close that off. And then what we can do is take that and fill it down. And because we absolute reference slope and intercept, they stay locked. It moves with our migration distance. And so we have actual values here expected values for our molecular weight for our native and our denatured samples. That's all there is to it. So with that, um, if you have more samples, you can always do averaging and standard deviation. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this lesson. Um, with that, that's it for our tutorials. Hope this was helpful.